What is up, guys? Aiden here from Lodge TV, and we are joined with Xavier from UO Food Blog. But at this point, we're just all Lodge TV. Anyways, we're gonna go into the park today because we have a brand new Halloween Horror Night speculation map by HN Nightmares. So this is the third, fourth, the fourth. final, the fourth, fourth, fourth and final speculation map from HN Nightmares. So we're gonna go in there and break down everything, and we're gonna look at some of the Horror Nights construction as well, as well as gives you guys some updates along the way. So with all that being said, let's get into Universal. And now we're walking into the park, and typically this would literally be a slow season, but it looks like the complete opposite of that. It's weird. It's usually not like this, but it's good. Park's getting revenue. I like this. But yes, as you look around, you can see that it is a very busy day, but nonetheless, we're here for our Halloween Horror Nights speculation map, meaning we're going to start over here with the very first location which is a returning location, which is right here next to Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. And right over here will be Spirits of the Coven, which was the rumored witch house. So that's pretty cool to know that it has a unique name like that. I want to know the setting of this. I can't wait to see what this is when it gets announced. Hopefully sometime next week or the following we will know. But nonetheless, we will keep moving here. Over here down the streets of Production Central or Minion Highway, whatever you want to call it, we have traditional Halloween, a scare zone that it was well dedicated to traditional Halloween. Now again, nothing's been confirmed yet, but this is pretty much what is rumored to be in this location. And it's on the speculation map, so it's pretty awesome. Can't wait to see it. But here's my hot take for the scare zone this year, traditional Halloween. I think these trees are staying. Now, why do I think the trees are staying? Well, I think they're gonna put the pumpkins in these trees here. That's just my one guess. I don't know. You have to have some kind of speculation, right? So I think the pumpkins are going to go in these trees. If not, then the trees should be gone within the week. Now over here in the Music Plaza stage, this is where we have our only thing that's 100% different from anything that's been on speculation map. This was Evil Dead. So Evil Dead is gone. Forget about it. But right here we have the original called Prison. And here's my hot take. The only time we really think about Prison at Halloween Horror Nights is when it's Hellgate Prison. I'm not wrong here, it's either Hellgate or Shadybrook Asylum. One of these two will be portrayed here, hopefully, and I really hope it's Hellgate because I've wanted to have a Hellgate house for the longest, but that's just personal preference. But if we go back to Shadybrook, I wouldn't be that upset. So now we're walking into uh, New York here. Uh, in this area, I uh, know we're not talking about scare zones, but if you've been watching any of the videos that Lost has been putting out, uh, the Tribute Store has a little a nod to what is coming to Fifth Avenue, which is where we're headed to now. And it sounds like uh, maybe uh, Dr. Professor Penelope Tusum from the Chocolate Emporium uh, has uh, created some new candy product. And... Uh, Something must have went haywire when she did that, so let's, uh, let's go take a look. We can see if there's something new that has been added to the tribute store for us. I don't think anything's been added, but <laughs> we're just going to keep going. And now we walk up to the mystic table that tells all past, present, and future. But nothing's new. If you guys want to see Xavier talking about this and giving his speculation... Go ahead and check out our last video. I'll link it somewhere on the screen so you guys can see it. But we go into detail about everything we think is going to happen here. But it does talk about something that we will discuss right now, which is the scare zone that will be located in New York, which is Candy Mutants on the speculation map. And one thing I really like about this so far is that there's a lot of construction. We will get to that construction right now. However, before we do so, got one right over there that is right next to Jimmy Fallon. That one's rumored to be Halloween, which is already announced house. Over here on your left, you have Fiesta del Chupacabra. And then over here on your right, you have Dead Man's Wharf. However, there was a leak design that showed a different name and that said Dead Man's Pier Winter's Night, pointing at this might be a cold house, meaning that it will have some snow effects and things of that nature. And we haven't seen that in forever. And it's honestly one of the coolest things. I love like effects in a haunted house. Weather effects in a haunted house truly form the house and make it amazing. And then over here we have some construction for Halloween Horror Nights. Now last time we were here it was just this crate. But now we have that. 
something around there and a staircase i said they like to close this off so maybe we'll just get this little here thing themed around it on the back side it says do not climb and all that but nonetheless we're gonna keep moving down because if you look up here it's really hard to see but if you follow my finger right there there are wires that are going across the top of this scare zone so you can see that they're gonna add things above us this time i think that's pretty awesome but speaking of things that are awesome and things that we like we see that they have installed the test seat for revenge of the mummy no we don't know when this is going to reopen however this is a very positive sign that it'll be very soon they also have the height check in again so we'll see when this reopens not sure when but it's awesome and now as we walked into sahara traders because we heard some banging and clanging they're making sure everything is bolted up here and everything is secured for the potential ride opening very soon but over here they also added some computer screeners slash checkout places to purchase your ride photo you can get your ride picture right here now this used to be way over here in the old store setup but everything's getting remodeled so i can't wait to see what this is going to look like when it's all done give it a few days maybe sooner than that and we'll see but we have a horror night spe like speculation map to get back to so let's get back on the streets and go into san fran now as we get a nice view of Lou Wasserman, we're going to start coming over here to San Fran where we see Fast and Furious Supercharge, which is where we have another house location for this year's event. Now we're not too sure if the entrance is going to be on this side or the opposite side. However, this is where we are going to see the horrors of Blumhouse featuring Freaky and the Black Phone. So, kind of excited for this. You guys know how I feel about this haunted house already. So, we're just going to keep going towards the scare zone, which is something brand new to this speculation map. And, well... It shocked all of us. And it is called Coven Witches. Now, of course, this is probably just a placeholder name, but for the time being, that's all we have. Treating this the same way we have the house, the witch house. I don't know if they'll be tied into each other. Maybe the witch will have a very prominent role at this year's event. Maybe some type of witch icon. I highly doubt it, but maybe. It is speculation. So keep it fun. Keep it classy. Nothing else has really been added out here since the last time we were here, but we could see some props coming here sometime this week. And now back here in the Fear Factor Live stage show. It has been the same thing on every speculation map. It is Halloween Nightmare Fuel. Kind of excited for it. Excited to see a sequel. Pretty cool. There's nothing really to see from out here because obviously they're building the stage and everything inside. We will be able to see this when it opens and I can't wait to see it. So let's keep going. Going down this way in World Expo, which we have two more house locations. And before talking about the house locations back here, the walls have gotten bigger back here by World Expo. I'm not sure what they're doing, but back here we have our two sprung tent houses. It is Bugs Eaten Alive and Descendants of Destruction. That just, the name alone has me excited. So yeah, can't wait to see what they put there. But. Also excited to see what they completely are. Can't wait to hear a backstory on the haunted house and know what both of them truly are. Because people are saying that the destruction, the sense of destruction is literally a Seas of Extinction sequel. So I guess we'll see, we'll find out very soon. But not sure. But for now, we're gonna start walking towards Springfield, which as of right now, and on any speculation map, there's nothing here. But who knows? We'll find out very soon with that. Let's start going all the way to Kid Zone because that's where our next thing is going to be. Before we get to Kid Zone, tell me if you noticed anything different here. It took me a few seconds to notice, but the walls are gone. There was literally a wall about like yay high that was here. And this could be a really good sign to maybe there being a horde back in Springfield this year. So we'll find out. Can't wait. Now as we enter Kid Zone, we have two more house locations. Over here we have the Weekend After Hours Nightmare. And over here, we have Universal Monsters, Legends Collide. My boy Colin's in there, so kind of excited to see him. And back here in Central Park, we have the Scarecrow Scare Zone is what's rumored to be here. And I didn't really show this off last time, but you can pretty much see straight clear through this. So I still think this is going to be a barn. And with Scarecrow being the rumored zone that's going to be here, I think that makes so much sense. So you can see these like white markings on the floor. I think they're going to have a Scarecrow right here. That'll bring you into the zone, and then this right here is the barn that it's protecting. That's just my guess. Now, before moving on into Hollywood, this over here in Central Park is where we have the Marathon of Mayhem show, 
but you guys knew that already so now we are going to make our way over here and see Nettlewoods Cemetery and now as we walk the streets of Hollywood we know that this is the street that has the most construction done so far and honestly it's probably my most anticipated zone it usually is every year but on the speculation map it is deadly unrest so cool it's no longer vampires but we'll see what happens and I don't know like I've said this is something I'm really looking forward to I can't wait to see it with my own eyes when everything's here bring in the fog bring in the scare actors bring in everything all right guys and that is the speculation map now that isn't the end of the video right now we are going to make our way over to islands of adventure and we are going to go check out the all hallows eve boutique because it is no longer the all hallows hula boutique and it's slowly transforming so let's keep the spooky rolling all right guys we are now on our way over to islands of adventure it is a very hot day very hot so stay hydrated when you're out here because it's probably going to be just as hot when Horn Ice starts in a couple of weeks. But I just want to let you guys know we did get a reservation tonight. We are going to go eat at Big Fire. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, we're walking over to Islands because we're going to go see All Hallows Eve. Let's go. And it's true guys, All Hallows Hula has turned back into All Hallows Eve. And as soon as you walk in, you can already tell. They moved the giant statue that was here and added a bunch of different props. These like vintage Halloween toys. I love them. They look so adorable. Especially this little gentleman right here. Look at him go. But yeah, it's so cool. Well, let's go take a look around because I'm pretty sure this isn't the only thing that's changed. Hello there. And it continues. Let's look over here at all this awesome stuff. So cool. I can genuinely say I like them. What is going on with this guy? I don't know if you guys can see it. He has teeth. That makes me uncomfortable. But yeah. <laughs> Look at the little kitty. Kitty kitty. When they added this store last year, I didn't think it was going to be a revolving door for all seasons. So it's pretty cool to see it consistently evolving and turning into more things. But it's awesome. I like it a lot. Can't wait to see what they do. Because we know there's more theming coming. More stuff is coming. So... We'll see what happens. Also, CML's here with us now. So, yeah. We're gonna go explore some more and have some fun. Spooky face. And it is a hot day, so we decided to come into Three Broomsticks and I'm gonna grab a butterbeer. Xavier found a new food item that he wants to try, so he's gonna get that. And I think CML's just here for the ride. Also, in case you were wondering, this is the menu for Three Broomsticks. Let me know down below if you want us to try this place out. All right, guys, we have now taken a seat here at Three Broomsticks, and I'm going to let Xavier tell you everything that we got here. Okay, so we got a couple different things. Uh, yeah. Of course, the main thing here on the plate is the butter beer. Yeah, two um, frozen butter beers. Yes, yes, yes. Um, next thing we got is more butter beer. Um, this is potted cream. It comes in, I think, just two flavors, regular, vanilla, and then butter beer. Um, next thing we have in the front, this is a chocolate trifle. And then in the back is the apple pie. Cheers. That's gonna be good, that looks good. Let's see. Oh, oh. Alright guys, so we just finished that three broomsticks. And I gotta say, those desserts are actually pretty good. Yeah. What would you say? How would you rank the three that we got? Okay, so personally, I would go the apple pie, crumble apple pie. Okay. Uh, then I would go the butterbeer potted cream. Okay. And then I would go the chocolate trifle. But I think you have a different order. Yeah, my order is definitely the potted, no, yeah, the potted cream, the, the pie, the apple pie yeah. apple pie and then the chocolate trifle trifle yeah i mean not bad overall depending on what your taste is you're gonna find different opinions like between us two two different people mm -hmm. two different opinions you might think something else try them yourself and then let us know in the future what you think of them all right guys so we're inside of what's the matter you 
Um, Xavier wanted to try something new here. Lexi's holding the camera, by the way, so if you guys didn't know that, she's back there holding it. Um, Xavier, tell them what we're doing here. Okay, I have to hold on to that because I already took the wrapper off. What is he doing? Chocolate covered, chocolate flavored chocolate. We got this coconut banana smoothie. So we're gonna try that right here. Perfectly wrapped. I'm getting like Mardi Gras flashbacks. If you guys didn't see our Mardi Gras video, like our first day of Mardi Gras, this man made me try everything sweet. And today we've eaten nothing but sweet food, except for the pots that I had earlier. But after that, it's just been nothing but sweet. So here we go. Here we go. Your first piece. Well, your only piece. I know you're not gonna want more than that. <laughs> I'll go first. It smells like a soap bar. <laughs> You want this? No, I'm good. Sorry. I don't like it. I don't like it. What? It's like it's banana, banana, banana flavored chocolate, white chocolate. Banana with and coconut did not go together. Really, really close. I'm gonna finish this because I'm a man, but. He's a man, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hot no. It's a no for me, dog. That's come, it. Come look at these chocolates. Let us know which one you want us to try next. And they're three for ten. Mm -hmm. Wow! Look at all those. Go ahead and vote for this one. It's a cruncher bar. It's just rice. I'll take this minion one over that one any day. But yeah, let us know down below. Now let's go. Now before going to do some dinner, we are going to ride a couple of rides. Well, maybe just one, but we'll see. We're gonna do Velocicoaster. And we're gonna go through single rider. Hopefully, we could all ride together. We'll see. All right, guys. So we just got off of the Velocicoaster, and it was a fun ride as always. Just in the back row. Yeah, yeah. Whipped around like always. It's great. Yeah. Fun and rough. That's how I like it. But anyways, guys, we are on our way now to go to Big Fire because we are all four hungry. Hopefully, this time I'll like it again. I don't know. Exactly. I she had a bad, really like last it. time we went. She had a bad experience. I've gone twice now. Had a well, bad experience no, and a good I don't experience. Want to say bad experience. I meant the food. Like I didn't like it. Well, so the experience was fine. It was the well, it's, food. It's, it's an overall experience, though. One little thing can ruin your experience. Okay, no. That's service. what we've been discussing, right, Xavier? <laughs> Regardless of service or taste okay, of food, it's still an overall like, experience. Yeah, you, you have different categories. You got your, you got your actual dining experience. Mm -hmm. You have your service experience. Uh, then your overall experience of like everything all together including pricing so all of that makes up your whole dining experience experience, experience of a restaurant exactly so we're going to big fire goodbye lovebirds all right guys and we are going to our seats right now we are here at big fire love the aesthetic in here it's very calm and peaceful all right guys you can scan right here to check out the menu just like all the other times but yeah I don't know what I'm gonna get here. Of course, I'm gonna just ask the server what they recommend, but I'm also gonna take a look for myself, and then we'll see where we go from there. No, no, this is a plus right here. We have a jug of water. Normally at the other restaurants, they don't bring something like this. So you just get your cups and you have to wait for a refill. Like for example, last time we went to NBC Grill, we waited forever for a refill, but we have a jug, so that's awesome. All right guys, so what we got for a starter, we got the fondue. And we got some sausage on the side. Oh god, it's not focusing. There we go. Sausage on the side. So yeah, stick right in. Alright guys, and here's my seafood bake. It looks delicious. CML got a, what is it? Just a cheeseburger, right? Cheeseburger, yeah. yeah. Big fire cheeseburger. Can't go wrong with that. Xavier, what'd you get? Uh, I got the um, short rib pasta. Okay, okay. And some mushrooms, because we love mushrooms. It's a one-two punch you can't go wrong with. And then Lexi. You got the barbecue uh, shrimp, right? Let's go. Cornbread. Smashed potatoes. Those look so good. But we are going to tear into this and then get some dessert too. All right, guys. So we just finished at Big Fire. CML had to leave. He had to go be somewhere. But he said he enjoyed his burger. Just so you guys know that. But I'll let Lexi go first on her thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, you guys saw I had the barbecue shrimp with cornbread and the, the crispy smashed uh, potatoes. Uh, the potatoes were okay. Um, they are pretty good. Um, that shrimp though, it's a lot of shrimp. So you're getting what you're paying for. Actually, I think it's way better. Like, I feel like the price doesn't match how much you get. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, you're getting yeah. more shrimp than what it costs. Like, it's $25. 
like all that I got. I feel like at a theme park in a restaurant, you'd expect to pay 25 and not get as much as you did there. Right. Because that was literally just like a ton of shrimp. And on that if plate. you guys are thinking it's gonna taste like barbecue, like I think it's more of like maybe the flavor. It has more of a savory flavor than regular barbecue. Like, right. I, I was like thinking it was gonna be like sauteed and like barbecue sauce. It wasn't. I'm not mad about it. And then it had like I think feta cheese on top. There was some kind of cheese yeah, on it. Yeah, it was really good. Um, yeah. Overall, I had a good experience. Uh, last time I didn't, and by that I mean the food. It's the service was great, um, but the food, I don't know what, remember what I got last time, but I know I didn't like it, um, so that's why I was hesitant to come eat again today, but it was actually really good, so I give my food a thumbs up. How was your pasta? Um, so, the pasta was good, it's the sauce that came with it, it was pretty watery, and um, I am a saucy person, so like I like my, when I say saucy, I mean like, I like my pastas to, you know, be smothered in sauce. Yeah. Nice thick, you know, sauce. Um, but like I said, it was watery, but it was still good. Um, the beef tips that were, you know, with the pasta was cooked perfectly. Um, I also got mushrooms. Um, I was expecting, I should know because we're at Big Fire, so everything's grilled. Um, but I was expecting the mushrooms to be sauteed, but they were grilled, but they were still good. Yeah. Okay, and I got the seafood bake, which was delicious it so looks beautiful i'm sorry it's okay so i did the thing where I, what i've been doing ever since we started coming to restaurants with you guys i've been asking the waiter or waitress hey what do you recommend and one of the things she said was this and when i heard it i said you know what i want that one and literally it lived up to everything the price tag's a little high for for a restaurant it's about like 30 dollars. it's almost no, it's, it's 28 but you have a stuff. lot of food in there you have shrimp you have mussels you have some kind, it was white fish, right? Yeah. yeah. So white fish, and then there was also the potatoes and sausage. Corn. So there's a lot, and corn, mm -hmm. and bread. It was just so much in there. I think that was worth it. I had a great, like a great experience. Only thing I'm sad about is that we did not get dessert. Yeah. Cause some people cool. didn't want yeah. s'mores, but it's okay. Next time we come here, we will get some desserts. We'll plan it out with time and you know, have an empty stomach. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below what you want us to do next. Subscribe if you guys already haven't done so. And six of my dudes.